Good evening, UP Sports family. First off, it's week two of Friday Night Frenzy on a Thursday. Secondly, you're welcome. Dave Ciseski alongside Connor Sturgill. Connor, we, we crowned a week one player of the week this we past did, we week. Did. Very impressive stats out there. But, Connor, I got to ask you, can we match that week one intensity tonight? Um, I think it'll be hard, but I mean, that's why there's so many weeks of the season. One for guys like us who can't get enough of football and everything like that, but yeah. also so we have a chance to really enjoy and find those new player of the weeks. And I think we'll have a couple candidates when this is all said and done. So let's cue the highlights. Westwood visiting Iron Mountain Patriots trying to move to 2-0 and on the season after an impressive week one victory. But this was episode two of the Zach Carlson Show tonight. Check out this though. Pilot a punt so return, well. our big hit on Marcus Ooh. Bose, but he able, he's able to stay with that ball. Zach Carlson though, he was straight up balling, Ooh. beats his defender here, comes down with it, full out extension, but he was just getting started, Connor. Look at him, Carlson would take the pitch here in the backfield, makes a move to the pylon, <laughs> shaking off a few Mountaineer defenders along the way to the touchdown and for good measure Connor why don't we go for two here all right put him out wide he split out wide here he'll get this catch two-point conversions good oh, he had three easy. touchdowns in the first half Iron Mountain trying to Love get that. back here on offense moving but when the Patriots D was swarming all night Did Joe here, listen to my keys of the game sorry keep going Dave Joe Kalavecki here trying to move the ball Connor but get picked oh. off Garrett Sundberg Patriots go on to win 28 to nothing and sit 2-0 and oh, Connor on the season all right the Houghton Gremlins, well, they jumped all over the Lons Purple Hornets early in the first with Kyle Primo going the distance for a rushing touchdown, make it 6 to nothing. Gremlins at that point. Connor, the orange and black, well, they keep the foot on the gas this time through the air with another touchdown. Camden Mark and rolling out with a bomb to Gabor Carlson, who brings it down in the end zone. And next drive, look at this. Look at this one here, Connor. I'm watching. You play Madden, I'm ready. right? Uh -huh. Caden Zapolnik, he says, well, just like Madden, I got a, a juke Ooh, stick here and a truck. And a truck. Two defenders Three, there trying to bring him four. down. Can I get four? All right. He's got that muscle, though. Moving ahead, more airstrikes than a game of Call of Duty right here. Mark them <laughs> again, this time to Cade Farrell, who's all by himself. He could have walked in backwards right there. And he was balling on defense, too, all night. Connor, uh -oh. look at this one. Cade, he'd stay busy. Hauling in an interception here next Purple Hornets drive. Just like Creed from yeah. the office, he'd say, well, I was at the right place at the right time. Mm. Now, Houghton, they keep going back in the end zone here. Again, Primo on the ground. Another touchdown. Gremlins win this one 34-7. Let's check out some scores here. The Broncos win big over the Wycons of West Iron County, 53-6. And a, a unfortunate a loss there for the Model Towners there, 16-24, the Manistique Emeralds. And I'll take over for right now as the Hancock Bulldogs get the win over the Ishpeming Hematites 20 to 12. And now, as we're going to move on to my highlights, we have the Nagani Miners getting hyped to take on the Calumet Copper Kings. And Gerald Johnson, with a lot of time in the pocket, finds Philip Nesson, who's wide open, and then hits the spin cycle and leaves the defender in the dust and goes in for the touchdown. And it's Miners 7 0 after the made PAT. Ooh, nice touchdown and now there. it is going to be Calumet's turn. And Paul Sturros with the greatest option fake I've ever seen, all alone Ooh. by himself. We could have walked. <laughs> that in ourselves, Dave. And now we are tied up after their PAT is good, seven to nothing. But Nagani back on offense, and Johnson finds Philip Nelson again. I think he might be a Player of the Week candidate oh, for us, he was Dave. Killing it. Pulling in another long, long catch, not a touchdown. He did have another one in the game though. But Gerald Johnson, he wants his time in the spotlight with his own fake, literally pulling it out of the arms of his running back Ooh. as they get in for the score. And Nagani, they impressed us even more in Week Two as they go on to win. 34 to 21. And now we have some eight-man action here, Dave, as the oh, Superior yeah. Central Cougars take on the Agadine Eagles. And Superior Central already leading six to nothing. And Matthias Miller gets the double handoff, but the ball is going to be fumbled. And it's going to be scooped up by <laughs> Kyle Frosty. And he has nothing but green grass in front of him. And very quickly, it becomes 12 to nothing after a failed two-point conversion. But Frosty, I'm going to say right now, he's another player that we can't hit in my book. But Agadine, they're fighting back as Matthias Miller takes the snap. He has a defender literally on it. Him, but he breaks away. He goes towards the sideline, oh, and he decides to take wow. it himself, breaks two more tackles, gets all the way in for the touchdown. They would fail the two-point conversion, so Superior Central still leading at this point. But now, 
at the end of the second quarter. They go for it on fourth down, but Miller is just short. So they turn it over on downs. And literally with less than a second left on the scoreboard day, Frosty takes the snap. He follows his one blocker who gets one good block and then one cut, and he is gone with zeros on the clock at 34. They win 34-30 in an instant classic. And some more eight-man scores as the Forest Park Trojans get a big, and I mean big, win over the Carney Nato Wolves, 48-6. And the Newberry Indians get the win over the Gogebic Miners, 49-14. Well, Dave, I mean, we have a couple of uh, Player of the Week candidates there pretty early. Philip Nelson from N Nagani and also Kyle Frusty, Fr Frusty, I apologize for that, also from Superior Central. I mean, when I got there, he already had, when I left, he had three touchdowns. I think he had a couple sacks, wow. almost had a pick. Um, he ran for that, and what's crazy, he had the walk-off touchdown to win because Igadine had 24 unanswered points to come back to get to 30. And then Frusty with a little, I want to say like 22 seconds left, he got the go-ahead touchdown for them. So he had at least four touchdowns <laughs> in the be game. It's going to tough. I mean, Nelson, I heard on the radio on the way here, a 95-yard score. 95-yard score. Uh, there's some big boys in those highlights, too. Well, you guys are making it definitely hard <laughs> for us, but we love that challenge to figure out the player of the week. And we have a couple more highlights for you just in case, because we have the Marquette Redmond, and they are trying to go 2-0 and for the first time since 2013. And we'll have that highlight and more frenzy after the break. We're still here. I mean, Dave, we kind of had to collect ourselves because, unfortunately, Frenzy wow. is almost over. We have one more highlight and a couple more scores to do. But I'm going to say this right now. One of the players in this upcoming highlight, I would put up for, in my opinion, player of the week. But you'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Well, I got a couple, too. But like you said, let's, put, let's play the highlights first All and right. we'll go there. Cue it. Traverse City Central looking to get their opening win as Josh Bernard takes the ball for a six-yard game. But later on, the Trojans fumble the ball, and it's recovered by the Marquette Redmen. And it's their turn to try to get a score. And Austin Rell with the pass to Owen Beauchamp, who gets a six-yard gain on the play, but they couldn't score on the drive. Trojans, they get another chance to score first. And Burnham plows in, and he gets the touchdowns, and Trojans take the lead early. And now Riddle, trying to do what he does best, carry the team. But he's going to throw it, and it's going to get picked off by Chase Adams to give the Trojans the ball back. And the, and the Redmen put up some good numbers, but fall to the Trojans 60-28. to And we have some final eight-man scores as the Stevenson Eagles get a big win over the North Dickinson Nordics. 46-6, and the Rudyard Bulldogs. You see this game wow. only in Madden or video games. I don't care what year it was. You know, Tech Mobile, that's dating myself. Actually, not really surprised. <laughs> You're probably surprised I know that. But they beat I'm the surprised. Cedarville Trojans by a margin of 63-6. to six. Yeah. All right, Dave, I'm putting you on the spot right now. Give me two players that you think should be Player of the Week mm. nominees. Well, listen, I first off, I have to go to Zach Carlson and the, the Zach Carlson show. I mean, he was putting up numbers. You just talked about Madden and Tecmo Bowl. You know Tecmo Bowl? Bo Jackson. Okay, like I'm aging myself a little bit here, but also that score, that 63-3 to, to three score, uh, that'd probably be you and me playing Madden. Uh, I would lose that. I'm okay to admit that. But I'm going to say Zach Carlson, okay, for sure. Um, and then I'm going to head over to, to Nagani, uh, wide receiver. You already know the name. Philip Nelson, man. Philip Nelson, a 95-yard score. 95-yard score. I mean, he was dominant all game long, Connor. He's done it all season long. He's the most, most athletic guy out there. You've heard it time and time again. That's what they were saying the whole night on the radio. So Carlson and Nelson are my two. What about you? I'm going to go with Kyle Frusty from Superior Central, like I said before the break, just getting not? crazy stats. And then even though they lost Owen Bochamp for the Marquette Redmond, he put up oh, some boy. good numbers as a receiver, got over 100 yards. And Austin Rill, even though they lost, he had four touchdowns, almost threw mm. for 300 yards. Again, he did have a pick, but I mean, he put up some crazy numbers. But I'm going to go with Owen Bochamp and Kyle Frusty for my two. But you at home, you can help me and Dave decide who we think it should be. Let us know. You can tweet at us or let us know on our Facebook page or our website. But once again, thank you all so much for tuning in to watch Friday Night Frenzy. Thanks. We are excited to bring you more highlights, and we'll see you next time on Friday this time. But you all have a great evening. Thank you so much for watching Friday Night Frenzy on ABC 10. And follow us on Twitter at ABC10 UP Sports. And while you're at it, give me and Connor a follow as well. And if you want to stay up to date on all the sports news of the Upper Peninsula, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on our Facebook page.